We are live. We're in. My light's a little dark, but we're going to go with it. My name's Steve Jaguer. Welcome once again to a Beer Native Beer Review. Okay, we're back. And I've got the ticker going right away for once. So if you're new to this, don't hit the microphone. It makes a ding noise. Please subscribe to the channel. Give it a thumbs up. Share it. Sharing is caring. If you like beer and you know other people who like beer, say, hey, go watch this guy. Join up when he does live ones, which I need to do more often. And hit me up on Untapped. That started to happen more. Untapped is there. there. Where is it? There. there, just there, there, there. Steve Jaguar on Untapped. I have very few friends uh, in beer because I live in a weird part of England. So hit me up there and share. And I remind me to put the beers I review on Untapped because I forget. And I'm trying to build this whole, anyway, I'll, I'll do a whole show about what I'm trying to build uh, on the website, and maybe some of you who watch can contact me and help out, and we can build this awesome thing. All right, but why are we here now? Well, you saw it just now. Yeah, it's an awesome Imperial Stout Cherry Trifle, and it is from a brewery called Brew by Numbers. And there's a whole story around how I got this beer, which is like both kind of crazy, terrible, and awesome at the same time. So let's let's hook them up, and I get some full motion video. Check that out. Ooh, look at this. Where is it? There for you. Yeah. BBNO, which is a very cool way to write brew by numbers, uh, is well. Let's check out the I story, right? Other than having an awesome video. You can kind of catch their history here. 2010, some people who met, meet in China on a rock climbing tour. Already pretty adventurous. I like them. Riding motorbike. I'm a little jealous of how they met. All right, let's let that go. But then we progress forward. They, they create a brewery. They love beer. They're brewing awesome beers. They number all their beers, which is cool. You can keep track and you can just say, have you had the 55 or the 33? Or in the case that I'm going to be doing today, I think it's the 61. So let's take a look at what we're doing here today. Um... The one thing I found recently is it's hard. They don't, they must sell very quickly because it's hard to find things in stock. And there is what I'm brewing today. The 60, is it one or four? 64 Imperial Stout. There you can see it. And I actually used one of their versions of a 64 uh, in a presentation that is totally different to this, which I told them about and they thought it was cool. So I got this in a really screwed up way. And that's the story. And it goes back to, let's go back to their page. I'm going to leave this up for a second. The new releases here. And I, is it still, there it is. The Hop Selection Lockdown Box. You see it's sold out, right? So somebody on a Facebook group posted the Hop Selection Lockdown Box. And so I just went and bought one. That was early January. Because we were in lockdown. It was dry January. They thought maybe they, maybe they thought, I know what we'll do. Uh, we'll make a special deal and you can see it's 60 quid and let's click through so you can see what you can't buy <laughs> anymore Probably for good reason It was a 24 case And if you look at what you got you got eight IPAs really good 6.2 percent Those are the citrus Simcoe's I was talking about some sessions some double IPAs Which were a double version of the same citrus Simcoe at 8 percent and then these bad boys here at 5.5 or something, right? But if you look at how much a beer on their website costs, just like here, we're talking six, five, six pounds each. So 24 of those, like they weren't joking when it was, what did they say, 112? Seriously, that's what it costs. There's no discount. That's the price. And so you get it for 60 pounds. And then they plus they had a, a discount code they were giving away called Fresh 10, all one word. It might still work. So you'd get another five pound off of it. So for 55 pounds, you're getting this ridiculous box. So I don't know how many people bought it. Way more people than actually they could serve. <laughs> Which, so a week went by, nothing happened, no box. Another week went, week went by, no box. I went on Twitter and Facebook and I looked around. Lots of people, not just me saying, hey, what happened to my discount box? And eventually... I think one of the owners, Dave, started writing people back on Twitter and trying to obviously put out these fires because they do the incredible demand. There's that code right there. You can see it on the screen. Fresh 10. Still works. And just trying to work it all out. So this guy wrote to me. Uh, I think his name was Oliver. 
and said, huge apology. We screwed up the hop selection lockdown box. We have barely any things in our shop. How can I help? And I said, and I just made up my own box, you know, along the lines of what they were offering. And he sent it. And so I added that trifle. I added this to it in place of other ones they didn't have. And so I got six of these, which was probably in the end worth more than the 112 pounds. So superb deal, right? That's how I ended up with this beer. Long story, uh, made long. So I'm super happy. I, I actually, I gave one of these to my beer loving mate, Jacob, and he said, that sounds weird, cherry trifle. And I haven't had one yet, so I, I'm doing them in order. I didn't know which one to review, but this is the one that didn't sell out on the site, so you can still buy it now. So this is the one we're gonna do. Uh, let's go through what it actually says to describe it on their site, right? Imperial Stout, full-bodied decadent Imperial Stout is a liquid expression of the dessert favorite. Yes. Layers of sour cherry vanilla custard sit atop a robust and well-rounded Imperial Stout base. Satisfyingly sweet, creamy, and best enjoyed in the colder months. Like right now, it's snowing outside. We can see there's vanilla, cacao nibs baked right in, a little bit of cherry. We got some oats for some sexy mouthfeel. Hops and yeast, but not a lot of information outside of that. So let's crack this bad boy open and see what happens. Let's bring this back. All right, and I am excited about this because I think it's gonna be really good. Some of the Amundsen beers that I've had, favor them again, have been outstanding and have been N not intentionally cherry rific like this is claiming to be. So I'm going to block the light a little bit, but let's just do that. You know what? This is, I'm going to get the whole can in here, aren't I? Breach of protocol, but no problem. Let's check the darkness. Oop, I'm going to have to uh, disconnect my phone. So go. What kind of elements of color are we getting back here? I'm getting nothing. Sometimes you see hints of red, right? It's just pure heart of darkness. Yeah, okay, so that's good. That is super dark. Let's try it out, shall we? Move the mic a little bit. Probably could have taken a smaller sip there. Forgot about the 10%. But mouthfeel top marks. Really silky smooth, really nice. And I'm waiting for the uh, the other elements to hit. Am I getting cherry? I am now. That's a late hit of cherry. It led with the, basically it led with a really chocolatey smooth mouthfeel that was just lush. You got a little bit of vanilla. It's not if you're like not a vanilla fan, I wouldn't worry about it. If you are a vanilla fan, you might have wanted you might have wanted a little bit more. And then it ends with this just light, lingering reminder of a cherry. In fact, actually, once the cacao and the stout and the beer fades, the cherry remains. And cherry is like the the invitation to go back in and say, Hey, how about a little bit more? Let me just try this. That was a more realistic sip quantity. I don't think this is like a multi-pack guzzler at 10%. Well, it could be, you know, teach their own, right? If you don't get a busy day tomorrow, more power to you. But yeah, it works in tiny amounts. Very nutty as well. So I would say like crushed walnuts. Getting a lot of that. Really good. One more, because I got a walnut I didn't have before. Mm. Hmm. Okay. So once you get used to those strong flavors and the alcohol, the 10% and the cacao that comes across right away as a bit of a powerhouse, I could see people would, would shake their head at the kind of dark chocolate bitter that you would get, but it would be eased in by the, by that really quite pillowy mouthfeel. 
And then when you take your second sip, like a really strong coffee, all those would be normalized and you'd be ready. And now you just get hit with kind of a really nutty cherry feel, which is really gentle and really nice. And, and actually now it's becoming a little bit beyond a sipper. All right, let's score it up. The 64 Imperial Stout. Let's bring the can back. And there, there she blows right there. Any, any other additional details in the can? Exactly what it says on the website. Same, same writing. No additional detail. I don't think they've given it star ratings on the can. Five for multi, which sure, it's a stout. They've given it three for complexity. I actually don't agree with them. I would mark them down as a four to five and give them a three out of five on sweetness and give them a four to five on complexity. That's my only disagreement. Otherwise, though, I think they hit it. So do I Do I like the art? I like the art enough that I'm going to just pop it right. I'm going to be self-indulgent and go, look, what a sexy can. What a nice piece of art. The dessert with the cherry on top, the incorporation of the number. Like, it's it's pretty pretty nice. I would snap that up on a shelf. And while it's not your typical insanity associated with craft, it's just straight up elegant and good. So it's an absolute winner for me. Maybe I am a real sucker for gold on black because I remember I gave the black is beautiful a really high rating and it's actually a similar theme color. So maybe I have to be cognizant of that in the future. But I'm going to give it a five on art. I'm going to give it a three on packaging. It's going to start with an eight. And going for accuracy and uniqueness, I think it has an edge on uniqueness. It's not crazy, so it's a four. And on accuracy, is it a cherry trifle? I'm going to give a four. Maybe it could have been sweeter. Even though they claim it was sweet, it wasn't there. Although I like it more for it not being a sweet. So trade-offs, right? Eight and eight, we're at 16. Do I like it? I really like it. It's up there with my favorite dessert in the cans. Uh, series from a Munson that I mentioned earlier. So I'm going to give it a 9. So it's going to get a 25. 25 out of 30. I might round it up to a 425 on untapped. I really like it. And I can reliably also tell you that the 05 uh, Citrus Simcoe that I already, I already had one. I'm not going to review it. I just wanted to pick one from BBNO. And I did. I might sneak another BBNO in because that was really good. And that's two for two that have been really nice. So maybe I'm going to do that. You'll have to wait and see. So far, so good. If you can get beer from them, I highly recommend doing it because so far it's been a tasty little adventure. That is the end of this one. It has been the BBNO Imperial Cherry Trifle Stout 10% from Brew by Numbers, it's called. And I really liked it. 25 out of 30, 45 on untapped. My name is Steve Jaguer. This is a Beer Native Beer Review. Thank you once again for watching.